The High Time, your infotainment show, right from EBC Radio 104.7, brought to you every Wednesday and Thursday from 4 to 5 p.m. by your host, Sigurd Mulgata. Hello and good afternoon, beautiful people. This is EBC Radio 104.7, and you are tuned into the High Time, your infotainment show, right from EBC Radio 104.7. Today, we are talking about ways to develop one's public speaking and leadership skills with leaders in Toastmasters International, including Sandra Cooper, the regional director for Toastmasters International in Africa, all the way from South Africa, Harry Karanja, the district director for Toastmasters International in Africa. Africa, all the way from Kenya, Magdala Macria, member of Jupiter Toastmasters Club in Addis and Area Director for Area 12 at Toastmasters International in Africa, and Ethiopia Stadessa, member of Jupiter Toastmasters Club in Addis and Division Director for Division D of Toastmasters International in Africa. Do stay with us. Let's start from the chairperson. What's Toastmasters for you? Toastmasters for me is a personal development for communication and leadership and in my mind it changes lives, it transforms people so that they can be the best they can be by communicating their message out into the community and out into their business and into their family lives as well. Lovely. Harry, take us through a certain section of a Toastmasters club. Now Toastmasters is called the place where leaders are made and the reason is because in Toastmasters you learn skills which build you in leadership. To be a leader it means you need to be able to convince people to follow you and to convince people you need to communicate. So the Toastmasters clubs focus primarily on helping people learn communication skills such as public speaking and interpersonal communication and they do it in a way that these skills feed into them becoming better leaders. So Toastmasters is a place where you can get experience in speaking in public, you can get experience speaking one-on-one, -on -one, and all these are done in a safe and supportive environment, so you don't feel like you're being judged, rather you're being supported by your friendly peers. Lovely. It's your piece? Uh, what was your fun project or your fun session that you can remember inside Toastmasters Club? Okay, I believe every Toastmaster session is fun. But that's maybe being biased because I feel like Toastmasters is a place where I consider to be my home um, in the sense that the people there have grown to be, become uh, a lot of my close friends. So I really enjoy the sessions. But the one I think is that's most memorable is when we run contests. So in Toastmasters, we have competitions and one of them is the humorous speech contest. So you think it's difficult to speak in front of an audience, but it is far more difficult when you have to make that audience laugh. So when you see people overcoming their fear of public speaking through humor, when you see them engaging with their audience in a, in a certain manner where when you're laughing, you're relaxing. So they engage with their audience on a whole different level. And I remember like, you know, when you laugh, cry, mm -hmm. if you're laughing so much, you yeah. cry. Yeah. yeah, that's how much I remember that um, one contest that we had, I think two years ago. So it was so enjoyable. And I feel for the people who saw Toastmasters for the first time, that experience was one of the most memorable. It was hilarious. It was even hard to pick who was the winner because every contestant was making us laugh so hard. So that's the session I'll never forget. Yeah, I, I brought this question because I was uh, in one of the sessions at Toastmasters. <laughs> and, uh, people would feel like uh, not taking the feedbacks and the, you know, the ego crumples in the midst. Is there any way in order to give them accommodations in such a way that they won't feel shy and uh, demotivated? Okay, that's a good question. And it is, as public speaking is one of the number one phobias in the world, it, they say, it's said that people fear uh, death less than they fear public speaking. Mm -hmm. So when you bring people into an atmosphere where they're going to be vulnerable, where they're going to become, uh, going to be 
uh, overcoming their major fear, then you need to create a safe environment. And that is what Toastmasters is. It is a safe environment. We are not there to judge you in any way. We are there to help you. And that's why we say we grow to become friends because over time people learn that vulnerability is something that you can practice in Toastmasters. And making a mistake uh, and correcting those mistakes is all a part of the journey and you feel that sense of comfort. It's not something that I can say, tell you, it's something that you can feel in the session when you attend it. Yeah, so that level of comfort allows people to really go beyond their, their boundaries and go beyond their expectations and do better and they know that the feedback that they're receiving is only for their benefit and not to judge them or to point fingers at them or anything like that. Yeah. Lovely. And uh, there is another notion whenever we talk about shyness and being reserved. In Ethiopia, being reserved is one of the major ethics that we can expect. Public speaking is a bit uh, giving you some kind of vulnerability, as Ethiopians say. So, is there any way that we can beat shyness and give ourselves uh, better motivation in order to be accommodated inside the Toastmasters? Well, I, I think being shy or being quiet in a society that we're in, it is a value, but not just simply uh, in general being shy or being quiet, but mm -hmm. being quiet with purpose. But at the same time, you have to speak up with purpose. And whatever uh, voices that you have inside you, whatever stories that are there in you that are worth sharing, you have to be able to speak up. And when you speak up, you have to be able to make sure that you, you gauge your, your audience, you capture the attention of everyone, not just simply making sound, but at the same time being the rhythm in their, in their mind. Mm -hmm. And that's what Toastmasters does for you. It helps you to to coach your ideas and your thoughts in a manner that would uh, touch the hearts and minds of people. Lovely. Let me go to again Sandra. Take us through the roads that every uh, Toastmasters would get through in order to be a good Toastmaster so that uh, everyone is going to have roles and uh, the leadership skills, the public speaking skills comes through those experiences. Take us through those. They do indeed. Thank you for the question. Inside the Toastmasters meeting, you will get an opportunity to actually speak in front of an audience and you will also get an opportunity to give feedback, to listen to that speech and give feedback. So that is a listening role. And we also experience speaking on our feet so that we learn how to speak in any situation. But apart from that, there are other roles which are leadership roles. It would be someone who is being the Toastmaster of the meeting, who would run the meeting. There would be a role whereby you set up the event beforehand and also there is a timekeeper to make sure that the speeches and the messages that you are delivering are delivered within a certain time frame. So there are many leadership skills that can be learned inside Toastmasters, including putting together a program and ensuring that every member actually gets an opportunity to participate in the meeting. Lovely. Let me go to uh, my brother from Kenya. So whenever we talk about the evaluation system, yes. uh, is there any parameter in order to set a certain person to be in the highest of the accolades and the other is such a big one? I like that you've asked that question and framed it in the form of a parameter because that's something which I get asked so often in my role as district director. How do you know if someone has passed or failed in their speech? Now, Toastmasters is all about peer feedback. And by peer feedback, you mean that the person who is going to evaluate you is not necessarily someone who is older than you or has been in the program longer than you, but it's someone who is your peer. And because they're your peer, they cannot pass you or fail you. All they can do is observe what you have done and give you their honest feedback. So that's what we do at Toastmasters. We don't ask someone to give a speech and then we tell them you have passed or you have failed. Rather, we observe what they have done and we give our honest feedback based on the guidelines for what they were supposed to accomplish. And when I talk about feedback, this some people misinterpret feedback to be point out all the things that they did wrong. 
But if you just tell someone what they did wrong, you, have, you haven't helped them. You not only have to point out their weaknesses, you have to give them suggestions for improvement. So if I tell you, okay, you did not speak as loud as you could have. If I end it there, then I haven't really helped you. What I could do, I could add, in future, if you want your voice to reach at the very end, perhaps before you come, take a glass of water, or try to push your words from your diaphragm so that you can project up to the end of the room. Now, by giving suggestions for improvement, I've not only pointed out your weakness, but I've also helped you become better in your next speech. So Toastmasters is not a pass or fail program. Rather, it's the people are observing you and they evaluate you and give you suggestions for improvement. Lovely. So let me go to Magdala in order to ask him about any session that includes local mother tongues. Tell us about those because most of the times you use English as a medium of communication. But uh, is there any session that includes Amharic or Omifa or something else? Well, I think this is also one of the, the reasons why some people shy away from those masters and some eagerly come to those masters. Uh, language is a, is a big challenge for many people and public speaking, yes, it is a, uh, the number one phobia. But at the same time, what adds more fear to the phobia itself is the fact that people have to come to the stage, to the podium and speak in, in, in English. Mm -hmm. So what we did in, in, in the Jupiter Toastmasters, and it is something that has been practiced in the other club like, like Addis Ababa Toastmasters, is every other uh, uh, month, at least in, in two months' time, we hold an Amharic session. Okay. Just to see how people uh, try to utilize their language and develop their public speaking skills. The, there is a scenario that we, we, we've seen. Uh, one of our members went to China and he attended a Toastmaster session. And the, the club that he attended was a club that, sta that was established at the same time that Jupiter Toastmasters actually was established at. And after that time, in, in the 10 years of that, that, that club establishment, there are more Toastmasters clubs in, in, in China, mainly because they were in Mandarin. So the more people speak in their own mother tongue, they can speak to the hearts of many people. Mm -hmm. And whenever we have Amharic sessions, it was very artistic. It is usually fun, even more fun than the English one. And there are a number of literary works being presented. So we found it very much helpful. And probably in the future, this is one of the projects that we, we would be aiming at in terms of how we could incorporate local language so that we could run Toastmaster sessions with the support of Toastmasters International. Lovely. With your piece? Amongst the, uh, the positions that you've got inside uh, uh, Toastmasters Club that you've been part of. Which one do you love most? And take us through the experiences. So every role has its benefits and through the experience you learn various things. That's what uh, the most one of the most amazing things about Toastmasters is that there are many competencies that you're going to learn through, the, through your journey and through the different positions that you take. I think the position that I enjoyed the most in terms of the impact that it's made on my life is when I served as the Vice President of Education for my club, Jupiter Toastmasters. So the role of the Vice President of Education, we say that that role is like the backbone for the club. Because the Vice President of Education assures that everybody is following their educational path. The agenda is ready for every session. So they make sure that the session runs. So without the Vice President of Education, you don't have a session and then there wouldn't be Toastmasters. So what I learned as a Vice President of Education, first of all, was the responsibility. The importance of that responsibility was really big. Um, I learned the power of negotiating because I would have to negotiate with people to make sure that they come to the sessions on time, prepared for their assignments. And, I and it allowed me to meet many Toastmasters because as the Vice President of Education I have to know all the members so it really allowed me to interact with every member and one of the benefits maybe we might link 
uh, hit on it later, is one of the benefits of Toastmasters is networking. So through my role as the Vice President of Education, I not only got a chance to interact with every member in my club, but I got a chance to interact with a lot of members of other clubs as well. So that was the most impactful in terms of the responsibility that I had. But obviously now as the division director, uh, this is the first time Ethiopia has uh, an Ethiopian has served as the division director. So it's a bit heavy mm -hmm. as an idea, mm -hmm. but when you think about it, it just shows that Ethiopia now, Toastmasters is growing, our influence is growing, our impact is growing, and it just feels so good to know that we are being represented on an international stage. Ethiopians are being represented in Toastmasters. So I'm very excited about this role. I'm only halfway through, so I'll get back to you maybe on how this whole entire experience is when I'm done. Lovely. All right. You are welcome anytime. <laughs> so whenever we go to Sandra, there are competitions inside uh, uh, Toastmasters Club and international uh, recognitions that comes through those. Tell us about the experiences that you had and what are the, those competitions about? Thank you. That's a lovely question because there are many different competitions and they speak to different types of competencies. The one would be what we call the table topics and that is actually learning to speak on a subject of which you have no prior knowledge and everybody competes and gives their version of how they would answer that question so that's really something very creative and we learn those skills in Toastmasters there is also the evaluation contest which again you listen to speeches and you analyze the speech and give feedback to the competitor or the contestant and that is judged and we get a winner from there. And then Epios, Ethiopius, e Ethiopius Ethiopia. has actually mentioned already the humorous contest whereby we learn how to give a speech and incorporate humor but also deliver a message as well. And the one that tops the charts is the international prepared speech contest whereby we go through different stages and eventually we get to a district level which could take the contestant all the way to America to compete in the World Championship of Public Speaking. That's very exciting and lots of people aim to be in that position and crowned the champion of public speaking. Lovely. But in line with that, there is one question and one critic that comes with uh, international competitions. That's uh, what's so funny in Ethiopia might not be funny in America. What's a social problem in Ethiopia might not be a social problem somewhere else. How can we uh, be on that same level of uh, evaluation in order to test and uh, give accolades or recognition to those different kind of people? Lovely. That is a great question as well. There are very many different cultural differences. But we find that worldwide, many people have the same humanness and they have the same kind of challenges. And it can be from anything about lack of confidence, it can be about giving validation to people. So if you choose a common theme, you are going to be able to engage a world audience. And there are some ways you can actually look at some of the international championship speeches and see what kind of content they have. And it has a broad universal appeal across all cultures. Okay, lovely. Harry, take us through the positions that one gets starting from a beginner to the highest of the highest speaker inside the Toastmasters. All right, so Toastmasters is structured in a way where you can keep increasing your competency level. And that allows you to show progress as an individual and also within your club. So when you join Toastmasters, usually you start by giving what is called an icebreaker. And an icebreaker is a speech which where you talk about yourself because you are the foremost expert about you. And the good thing also, even if you tell something which is not entirely true, nobody can really know because you're the expert on you. And the icebreaker is the first speech you give because it's the one which most people are comfortable about. Mm -hmm. You know your stories, you have probably spoken to people about them several times before. The icebreaker also helps introduce you to the club. 
So the club becomes your family. They understand who you are. They understand where you've come from. They know probably your personal background and history and how they can support you. In addition, the purpose of the icebreaker is to help understand what your weaknesses are and what your strengths are. Because in all future speeches, this is what will guide your progress. Now the way the Toastmasters program has been designed is that it is uniquely tailored. So you will go through the program based on what your particular needs are. For example, I am currently undertaking a program which is called Effective Coaching because I want to be better at being able to build and impart skills on other people. Whereas some people take a program where they want to become a better public speaker called Presentation Mastery. So you will pick a program and design the speeches and the projects that you will do based on your own individual needs. The best thing is, after each progress, after every speech you give, you'll get feedback and someone will tell you, I think you did a good job and you should progress to the next level. Or someone can tell you, perhaps you should take a look at this project again so that you can ensure that you have gotten the objectives right. The greatest thing about Toastmasters is that it's a self-paced program which means that you can either decide to take one year to complete the project, or you can take five years like, like I did to complete the first project. But the fact that you pace it at your own speed means that you grow at the level which you're comfortable with. So no one is rushing you. You take the time that you need. You repeat the speeches as many times as you feel comfortable. And at the end of the day, you're not working just towards a certificate or a piece of paper. Rather, you're working to improve a gap that you know exists to develop yourself as a person and to develop yourself professionally. So the Toastmasters program is great because it's self-paced, it has different levels that you climb through, and you always start with a topic which you know best, which is yourself. Lovely. That's well put. Ethiopies? There is one critic that comes with Toastmasters, that is the accounting and the accounting. <laughs> Yes. How are you managing that? I'm not. Should I say that? <laughs> I mean, so, in a way, mm. people will run away from Toastmasters because yeah. of this. And I think there are some groups who will give you some kind of a bail or something like that whenever you do that. So luckily for Toastmaster clubs in Ethiopia, we haven't started a bell yet. <laughs> okay. So I know in Kenya they have either a bell or they have a glass and with a spoon. So every time they hear a filler word, so filler words are ah, um, so, and, which we use a lot of because English is not our first language, so it's understandable. So what they do is, and you see that I used so as well, <laughs> it's a learning process. They ding the bell whenever they hear the filler word. and. People shouldn't shy away from Toastmasters because of that, because when you become conscious of your filler words, it's how you use them less. And it's okay to fill in the gaps of your speech with pauses. It's because we feel nervous. Whenever there's a gap in our speech, we feel nervous. So we want to fill that with, and, um, so, yeah. like, it's, <laughs> we got our it's leaders. the nervousness. We learned from exactly. African leaders. Yeah, yeah it's really, <laughs> yeah. I believe it's the nervousness and we feel like that gap is actually really long. It's not. It's probably just one second or two seconds, but we feel it's too long. So we feel the need to fill it, which is not necessary because pauses, as we've learned, are actually very very effective in speeches if they're used properly so don't fear it so I said so <laughs> don't fear it embrace it the more conscious you are of it the less you will use it so if there's anybody that's out there that's fearing Toastmasters because of the filler words and because we make you conscious of it please don't I, I think it's out. not only about fear that we use filler words it is also a crunch that we're using it in most cases, if we don't prepare for whatever we are speaking, we find the, the, the need to crunch on certain words mm -hmm. so that we can transit to another idea. So it is just a crunch. An ideal aspect is get prepared, be conscious about it, and the moment you are conscious about it, try to find as many utilizing words that would be like pauses that would transit you from one idea to the other. Okay, let's go to the benefits. One of the benefits that one gets from Toastmasters Club and being inside it is having friendship 
long-lasting friendship in networks, and some have taken it to matrimonial levels. <laughs> <laughs> Take us through those experiences. Well, I believe in Toastmasters, one of the ideal things that people at face value see and come is public speaking, the essence of leadership and communication skills. But beyond that, there is what we regard as the peer conversations that you have. The, the mentorship that you get, the coaching that you get, these are kind of things that are very invaluable. And at the same time, it is probably the only place where you're going to meet people of different generations, having a common goal, a common agenda of developing one another. I have friends that I've met through those masters who became my mentors, who became my friends, who became my partners in businesses. And this is something that you, I, I truly value. And whenever we think of Toastmasters, it is just as Ethiopia said earlier, it's a family. It's a place where you feel comfortable, vulnerable, and at the same time you feel encouraged and developed. The feedback systems that we use, it's not about hammering people through to perfection. And in Toastmasters, there is no perfection. It is always a place where you get yourself improved. However you deliver the speech today, you find it by far better if you get a chance to more. And that environment is created through the feedback that we get, through the mentorship that is provided, and through the quotes that are provided to you. Toastmasters is like that big family where you have that uncle who always uh, spoils you, mm -hmm. that aunt who could always pinch you whenever you, you find the wrong ones, and the mother that always carries you in a way that is your, your place, the father who always motivates you. That is how I see those masters. Wonderful. Hello and good afternoon, beautiful people. This is EBC Radio 104.7, and you are tuned into the High Time, your infotainment show, right from EBC Radio 104.7. Today, we are talking about ways to develop one's public speaking and leadership skills with leaders in Toastmasters International, including Sandra Cooper, the regional director for Toastmasters International in Africa, all the way from South Africa, Harry Karanja, the district director for Toastmasters International in Africa. Africa, all the way from Kenya, Magdala Macria, member of Jupiter Toastmasters Club in Addis and Area Director for Area 12 at Toastmasters International in Africa, and Ethiopia Stadessa, member of Jupiter Toastmasters Club in Addis and Division Director for Division D of Toastmasters International in Africa. Do stay with us. So let me go to uh, Sandra and ask you about the major topics. Is there any specifications whenever we talk about a table topic or a certain topic that is going to be presented by a Toastmaster? Not at all. Each club is able to do their own type of table topic conversation and typically what we use are subjects that people can easily talk on. It's not there to catch people out. It's there to encourage them to organize their thoughts and to be able to present a small, comprehensive mini-speech. So there is no specific topics. Any topic can be chosen and it's there to help you to learn and develop. Lovely. Even if it's political. Even if it's political, you can use it if it's used in a good way. We tend to shy away a little bit from politics and religion because it can cause a lot of emotion inside the actual community club or in any club for that matter. So we try and use safe topics that are not too controversial, but there are people that do give speeches on those topics because they've really researched and they, they give a measured speech. So it's not to convince people to different ways of thinking, it's just to give their opinion of what they feel on that particular topic. But typically, table topics, you can use any topic that people can talk on. Lovely, Magdala. Whenever we talk about diversity, most of the times it's focused here in Addis. Is there any plan in order to spread it across the regions of Ethiopia? One of the, the, the reasons why a division is currently existing, areas are being formed, is whatever we are benefiting in Addis should be something that has to go out and you know, make an impact. There was a, a, a pilot that started in Awasa at some point in time. It died out, but we're also going to ignite it. 
there, there is a, a discussion with the university in Magale so that we could start a Toastmasters club. But one of the ideal things that we are also thinking is making sure that the universities could be our way in to develop the Toastmasters uh, clubs. The industry uh, zones could also be another, uh, the industry parks could also be another ideal opportunity to, to pitch Toastmasters, to, to push it further. And the more we, we, we do that, the stronger we become. The aim as, as Toastmasters clubs in Ethiopia is at a certain time in the near future, we have to have our own district. And this is one of, uh, at some point in time, I feel as a pain, but at the same time, as I feel it as, as an encouraging reason to drive forward. Whenever we think of Toastmasters, Ethiopia brought Toastmasters first in 1959. Okay. But we didn't push it that far ahead. We Toastmasters was considered as an elite group mm -hmm. and uh, a kind of a platform for the only the elites only gather around. Kenya came to Toastmasters picture quite recently, thirty years probably. But they had they have more clubs. They currently mushroomed uh, the the Toastmasters uh, clubs in, in in the district. So that's something that we have to learn from, from our Kenyan Toastmaster friends. What are the things that they have done? What are the kind of uh, challenges that they have gone through? And how could we learn best from them so that we could have as many Toastmasters club, if, if, if not more, so that we could make Toastmasters a kind of uh, a go-to place for personal development in Ethiopia. Lovely. Again, let me go back to Ethiopia in order to tell us about the investment. I don't call it a fee or a payment in order to invest on oneself. The investment that is expected to be paid by someone whenever he or she becomes part of Toastmasters Club. And is it affordable? Affordable is uh, <laughs> subjective, I assume. Okay. So for Toastmasters, we need to understand that it's an international institution that we are taking a part of. It's a very well-organized, well-resourced international institution. So to be a member of that is a privilege. And I do believe, in my eyes, it is affordable with regards to the service that we are being provided through it. So should I mention exact figures on... Uh, of course, for somebody who wants yes. to be part of any clubs in Ethiopia, mm -hmm. it's good to let them know. Yeah, okay, so I'm just going to tell you what it takes to join a club that already exists, mm -hmm. not to establish a new club. Magdala, mm -hmm. maybe you can help me with the calculations. Yes. I, I was trying to put it in, in, a, in a perspective. Okay. Is that investment expensive? Mm -hmm. One of the things that I always do is how much macchiato coffee does any person consumes in a day, in a week, in a month, in a year? And if you calculate that, it is by far lesser than that. On average, for a Toastmaster member to start the first year, it, it would cost the, the, the person close to $110, roughly close to 3,000 per in, the, in, the, in, in local currency. But that, if you divide it by 365 days, it is close to eight per something. And that is just the, the amount of money that we spend on a glass of macchiato or coffee. Mm -hmm. And anybody who is a visionary enough to developing himself or herself to a higher um, ladders of leadership, to be an excellent public speaker, to be an excellent storyteller, or in any of the professions that they are in, to be better at what they do. That self-investment is by far more important. And it was just a glass of a macchiato. Lovely. Ethiopia's again. <laughs> just to add on what to Magdala said, we said that public speaking is an ongoing process. It's not a one-off thing where you go to a training for half a day or one day and they, and then you learn to become an excellent public speaker. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a process. And you could spend 3,000 burr on one training, but you could spend that 3,000 burr on a year worth of Toastmaster training, a year worth of meetings, of mentorship, of guidance, of constructive feedback. So it's always, as Magdala put it, it's always good to see it in reference to something and to see the bigger picture as well. And we are here to attest to that. 
So that investment is more than worth it. Just mm -hmm. <laughs> Lovely. How can you uh, measure the situation of soft skills here in Ethiopia? Because leadership is a soft skill, uh, speaking is a soft skill, public speaking, and others that one can get through being part of a, a Toastmasters club. How can you measure that? How can you see that? Is it growing at a steady level or not? I think that to be an excellent leader, public speaking is one of the major elements or one of the major skills that you will need to possess. And we've seen that on all of our greatest leaders. Uh, equivalently, they're also really great speakers. When we speak to the wider community, at us as Ethiopians, and I don't mean to generalize, but we are modest in that we're not the kind of people to quickly raise our hands, give our, our opinion, speak loudly in public settings. That is why I think we need Toastmasters here, maybe even more than other places. So definitely the community, there is a big gap that we need to fill. And especially if we're talking about public speaking in English, which is also another big step because globalization is happening <laughs> and you know the, the what's it called the world is becoming one village yeah in that learning new languages especially english as an international language and accepting that embracing that and then building our confidence in public speaking in that regard is something that i feel like we need to embrace and we need to invest time to build on so our community, I feel like it's, it's really hard to generalize. There are really excellent speakers and there are speakers that have the potential that just need that support. And that is what Toastmaster hopes to provide. Lovely, anything to add? I'm going to bring my other hat. Okay. Uh, being part of the academia for uh, close to two decades now, one of the things that, that I see is that we need a lot of soft skills being infused in our education system and the development systems that we have. Uh, close to 70 plus percent of the population is under the age of 30. That is a huge amount of uh, population that is in the job market or ready for the job market. And the universities that we have, unfortunately, we are in the manufacturing mm. process. We just simply manufacture graduates. Yeah. And we're not giving them the right skills that would make them ready for the job. And currently, majority of the employers, they don't look for qualification. They look for talent. They look for specific skills, mm -hmm. skills that would make them you know, fit enough to an organizational context. Uh, the corporate organizations, the multinational organizations, they need skills more than the, the kind of qualification we bring to the table. Mm -hmm. And Toastmaster is that, that ideal pl platform that caters lots of skills you know, geared to a specific need of the individual. And for the Ethiopian context, where we are right now, I believe we, we are by far lagging when it comes to the soft skills. And we have to do a lot more on that. And Toastmasters is one element in adding value in terms of developing those skills that are by far needed. Just to put it into perspective, in our education system, for instance, there is no place where we learn how to lead a meeting, how to be a host in a session, how to you know, answer a table topics or an impromptu question. These are kind of things that we just simply immerse it. Either we learn it or we just simply shy away from it. You know, whenever people ask us, do this presentation, you would find a reason not to do it. Or on that occasion, you would find yourself sick so that you'd you would miss the opportunity course. But Toastmasters gives you that, that ocean, that swimming pool to test yourself in terms of how you could swim better in public speaking, in presentation, in communication, in working with, 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 uh, with colleagues at the same time. Lovely. What was the major purpose that brought you to this? The major purpose, my purpose, is to support the leadership and to help them develop and grow here in Ethiopia. There is huge potential and as you can see we have some very passionate Toastmasters who are on the call today. So that is my main purpose. Okay, lovely. Okay, let me go to Harry and uh, I want you to tell us about the core competency that are inside the Toastmasters Club and uh, in the different levels. Right, so Toastmasters is a leadership and communication development program. 
and it has over 300 competencies, the soft skills that you were talking to about earlier. But there are five which are considered the core competencies. The first is what Toastmasters is most known about, which is public speaking. The ability to stand in front of people and speak confidently and at short notice. The second one is interpersonal communication. And interpersonal is important because we are dealing in a diverse world. You need to be able to, to be emotionally aware when you're speaking with someone. It could be someone who's at the same level, someone who's a subordinate or a superior. So interpersonal communication is important and especially even in family relationships, how to communicate in such instances. The third core competency is strategic leadership. Africa needs leaders and not just leaders, but strategic leaders who can see beyond one, two years, but who can look at a vision for Africa for the next five, 10, 50 years. And strategic leadership is something which is a core competency that is gained in Toastmasters. The fourth is management, because while you can have a strategic leader, you need someone to manage the process, to get from point A to point B, to use the resources which are available within a specific time period and covering a specific scope. So management is a fourth core competency, and the last, and in my opinion, the most important core competency is confidence. Confidence is something you'll rarely see in any curriculum, any program, except in Toastmasters. And confidence is a currency for success. If you want to be successful in this world, you must be confident. Otherwise, no one will give you an opportunity to express the ideas or the vision that you have. So those five core competencies are what you will gain in Toastmasters. As I've said, there are over 300, but those five are the core competencies. Lovely. Let me take you to Kenya then. Yes. What's the situation of Toastmasters Club and its development out there in Kenya? Well, as Magdala mentioned at the beginning, Toastmasters in Kenya came after Ethiopia. And if you go back just 10 years ago, we were actually on equal footing. Ethiopia had about four Toastmasters clubs, Kenya had about four Toastmasters clubs. Okay. So what changed? Because Kenya right now has 42, while Ethiopia has about nine going to 10. You have a runners. <laughs> we, well, you know, Kenya and Ethiopia have healthy competition when it comes to running. So <laughs> currently we're ahead, but we have no doubt that Ethiopia will have its opportunity. But the reason why there was a difference is we realized that education is not something for the elite. Education is democratic. Everybody deserves a chance to grow in their personal development and professional. And so that's what we did. We went out and opened up Toastmasters to everyone. In fact, we set up a, a group which we called the Roadmasters. And the motto of Roadmasters was bringing a Toastmasters club to a town near you. Okay. And the funny thing is, Roadmasters actually brought me to Addis. So my first visit to Addis about two years ago was through this group Roadmasters, and it helped us also come and share our vision and our passion for Toastmasters. Of course, we found Magdala and, and Ethiopians and several other Toastmasters who are equally passionate. And that's why those nine, ten clubs, which I'm telling you are in Ethiopia right now, represent a 125% growth in the last two years. So you can see already, Ethiopia has its running shoes on, you're flexing your muscles, <laughs> Kenya now has to be worried and start looking behind because without, I mean, in a few years, we're probably going to overtake us as well. Yeah, I think it's a co-pilot activity. <laughs> we work together in order to achieve our goals. What about the experience in the UK? Is it uh, uh, taken by expats or only the people who are residing in the UK? In the UK, so I was born in the UK, but I have subsequently moved to Southern Africa, so I'm in South Africa. But in the UK, there are many clubs because the main language is English. So it's open for everyone and it's taken up. It's, it's really a good growth development uh, community in, in the UK. In Southern Africa, which is where I typically look after the clubs and the leadership, we have many... You are not only limited to your club, 
you have the ability to go to any other club and deliver assignments. So we support each other very much in that when a club is starting, let's say they are new, they need guidance, they need mentorship, and they need people to come and inspire them. And that guidance, that inspiration, and that mentorship comes from members of other clubs who have been doing it for longer. So we really support each other. And when we say we are a family, it's not one club that's one family. It's we are one big family in Toastmasters. So it's open to all once you become a Toastmaster. It's open to all. And we really support each other by attending each other's sessions and by providing mentorship and guidance along the way. So that's between the clubs. And then at district level, so I, as I mentioned earlier, there are a lot of resources that are available on the international, Toastmaster International website. But there is also a lot of leadership opportunities that in the past couple of years we have managed to exercise. So there is the area director position that Magdala is currently serving in where he is overseeing four, four clubs in Ethiopia. So that, the ability to get that leadership position that is recognized by Toastmaster, Toastmasters International, to get the guidance that is provided by district leaders such as Harry and regional advisors such as Sandra, that experience is not something you can put a monetary value on. It is transformative. As well as now we have divisions where divisions oversee the areas. So that in the next level also is a next level leadership experience that you wouldn't normally get. And through that, you get a lot of guidance. It's like international level guidance and international level support that you wouldn't normally get in other settings. So when it comes to collaboration and support, that's what it looks like at club level and at leadership levels uh, throughout. So Magdala, for somebody who wants to be part of Toastmasters Club, you don't have to mention names, how can they find you? We are always available. <laughs> well, one of the, the best things, you know, if you Google, for instance, leadership platforms to, to best develop oneself, one of one of the top 10 that you'd find is Toastmasters. And if you just simply Toastmasters in Ethiopia and you'd find clubs that are in your area and in, in your uh, vicinity, and you just have to find whichever club that is closer to you and in that you'd find a contact information as well. So that's the easiest way of finding a, a club that is closer to you. The other thing that we were doing is we were trying to reach out as many people as possible through the different social medias so that we could uh, be accessible and in any of the sessions that a guest comes we encourage them to, to pay a visit a certain time so that they could have more experience. Lovely. Let me take you to the competition that you had. As Sandra mentioned earlier, we have four categories for the contest, the competitions. So we've got evaluation, table topics, humorous and international. So what happens is it, you compete at different levels before getting to the district. So you compete at club level and then if you pass you, can, you represent your club at area level and then at division level and then you make it to the district. So even passing through that process and gaining that confidence of winning and being your, the representative for your club, it's, such, um, it's an honor and it's a privilege that uh, I think Tos, uh, Magdala also shares and Harry, of course, as... Have you co competed in the past? Yes. Yes, so as a contestant, he, he understands the feeling, the honor that exists. So after we've um, run the contest in Ethiopia, we take four representatives to the district conference. So last year, the district conference happened in Kampala, Uganda, and then the year before it happened in Nairobi. So last year, Magdala came in second for one of the contests, which is the evaluation. The next question comes to you. Man. Yes, yes, <laughs> you should. And I also actually participated, uh, participated in the international speech contest, which was a really excellent experience. So maybe you can ask him about his experience as the second place winner of the evaluation speech contest. Okay. Competition is always, uh, we, we see it amongst other people. For me, competition is with yourself. And every time that you get the opportunity to take the stage, to, to present whatever idea that you have, it is up to you to, to see, have I made an improvement in a way that I delivered my speech, my evaluation, my table topics better than I did in the past. And whatever lessons have I learned from all the other people who are delivering their assignments, 
And for me, when I took the stage to compete, it's not to compete against all the other competitors, but it was, you know, am I going to do it better than I did in the past? And that's the, the aim I had, and that's what actually got me the second place. And I'm still happy because I am by far a better evaluator than I was before. And even after the competition, now when I do evaluation, I'm by far better than the time that I competed actually, because I learned from the other people. And Toastmasters give you that, that beautiful ambience of improving yourself on a go. And it's always a work in progress that you are in you. Lovely. I would like to commend uh, Ethiopia's Anne Magdala for taking part in the contest. Okay. As I've mentioned, uh, Ethiopia, the fact that English is not the first language means that there is a slight disadvantage, but both of them performed admir admirably. And the thing about contests is, be is contests push you to be better than you could ever have done if you just kept to the normal program. And Toastmasters recognize that. So the contests work exactly as Mechdela has mentioned. Yes, you have been coming to the program, you have been giving speeches, you have been becoming more confident. But if you really want to test yourself, then you have to push yourself outside your comfort zone. And that's what contests do. At the end of the day, like Mechdela says, the real person you're competing against is yourself. And the better you become, the more you take out of the program. So I definitely recommend if you join Toastmasters, don't just leave it at attending meetings. Go for the contest and see yourself grow. Lovely. Sandra, yes. how can one get the best out of a Toastmasters club? In my opinion, it's by regularly going to the meetings and taking on different roles because you ne never really know your strengths until you've actually tried something out. And there's such a lot of encouragement. So regular commitment, regularly going and delivering an assignment, a different assignment, taking something on so that you can speak at every single meeting. Even if it's only for 20 seconds or two minutes, you're doing something, it's improving your skills. Lovely. I think there is a conference that is going to happen with regards to Toastmasters. Do brief about that. Yes. So we're going to have a very exciting conference. It's the division conference. So the structure follows under our division. We have three areas and two of those areas are in Ethiopia and we have one in Mombasa. So for the division conference, we're going to be having the four we're going to be having the four contests, which is the evaluation, table topics, humorous and international. And we're going to have a representative from each uh, area. It's going to be very exciting because this is the first time that Ethiopia is hosting a division conference. So it's a very big deal for us. And we say that Toastmaster like breeds excellent public speakers. So that is where you hope to see the best of the best battle it out uh, for the honor of representing the Division D in the district conference. So that conference is coming up, it will be around March. And just to mention that, as we said earlier, now more than ever, Ethiopia is being represented on the International Toastmasters platform. So we are looking to partner with companies that can help us and that can support us in this journey. Public speaking and um, leadership Maybe in this regard is not something we might not be we might be known for internationally, but it is something we do want to be known for.